Hi everyone, it's Johnny Seed here again, and today's video is going to be about a gig I went to a couple of Fridays ago now. Uh, my good friend Edward and I had the privilege of uh, going to see the Ruttles live in concert, uh, and not too far away from where I live. Uh, yes, a uh, sentence I thought I'd never find myself uttering, I'm going to see the Ruttles play live. Now if you don't know who the Ruttles are, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that anybody watching this video will probably know who they are, and are very familiar with them. Now I'd be very surprised if anybody watching this it's <laughs> right on cue! <laughs> Mo, you've been so quiet. I've not had a peep out of him at all. This is for Lise. Say, say hello to Lise, Mo. Say hello. <laughs> Come on. Hi everyone, it's Johnny Seed here again. And today's video is going to be about a gig I went to a couple of weeks ago now. My good friend Edward and I had the privilege of going to see the Whittles play live uh, in a venue not too far from where I live, just down the road really. Uh, yeah, I never thought in my wildest dreams I'd get to see the Ruttles play a gig. And now, there's only two of the original Prefab Four, uh, Neil Innes and John Halsey, uh, aka Barry Warm and uh, Ron Nasty. Um, so, uh, they were playing at a place called The Continental, uh, probably one of the best pubs in Preston. If you're ever in town, go and check it out. They have a venue there and there's a restaurant and the, one of the best stocked bars in town. Um, so yeah, it came up on, on Facebook saying that they were doing a tour and playing near me. So I was like, and it was 20 quid a ticket. So I was like, right, of course, I'm definitely going to be um, involved in that. Uh, hi, Mo. And we weren't disappointed at all. They played pretty much or the whole of uh, All You Need Is Cash and pretty much most of Archaeology as well. And a couple of covers. They did All Things Must Pass uh, as a tribute to George Harrison, who, of course, helped make, get the film made, I think. And uh, they did a version of Be The End, at the end of the night, which is fantastic. And the Travelling Wilbury song, Handle With Care, which is great. Every member of the, the backing band uh, took a line. Uh, part of that backing band included the bass player was uh, David Catlin Birch, who um, was in World Party. Uh, I discovered after the fact. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it, it was a great night. One of the probably the uh, I can't remember the last time I went to a gig and I was in the younger age bracket. <laughs> it was certainly a very mature audience. Right. Okay. Make your mind up, Mo. What do you want to do? Okay. So Mo's, we're going to have a co-host. <laughs> so I first saw the Ruttles film in about 98-99, uh, a friend, when I, I moved into a flat with a friend of mine from Fleetwood uh, when we lived in London, we lived in London together and he brought it on video and we'd spe we'd watch, we'd watch it about, you know, at least once a week, uh, we thought it was hilarious and uh, he had the album, uh, so I had a copy of that, but I remember Neil Innes from back in the 70s, I, I've got vague memories of his programme, the Innes Book of Records, I remember watching that, and he was just like that familiar, familiar face because he was in some, uh, he was in Monty Python. Briefly, I think the last series of Monty Python, he, he co, uh, he helped write a few of the sketches. Um, one of only, he's the one of only two people to write for Monty Python that weren't part of Monty Python, and then the other one was Douglas Adams, and um, he was in uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail, and he wrote the music for that. So I knew who Neil Innes was. And, um, but it wasn't until I saw the Ruttles movie that I realised that the song Let's Be Natural wasn't an actual John Lennon song. <laughs> oh man, there's a minute. Because uh, I remember hearing that song, Let's Be Natural. Uh, it was on a compilation tape that my brother made back in the early 80s. And I got a copy of it, the, the compilation tape, but without a track listing. And I was always like, what's that, that's that last song? That, that John Lennon song was great. And I actually remember going into places like HMV and looking through the John Lennon records, trying to find which one which album Let's Be Natural was on. I <laughs> didn't know at all that it was actually a roll song written by Neil Innes, so... Yeah, so at the end of the night we got to meet them. I did a, they did a bit of a meet and a greet. Well, John Halsey and Neil Innes. Uh, not the rest of the band. I don't know if they, that was part of the deal or not, but they didn't have to do any meeting and greeting. So I got a little bit of footage of the night, not a lot. Uh, I didn't really want to be that guy standing there uh, with his camera, uh, you know, experiencing the gig through a phone, you know, or a lens. I actually wanted to enjoy it personally. Um, but I caught a little, I did film a little bit. Most, most of the footage I got was actually the back of Ed's head. So there's uh, <laughs> what usable uh, images I have, I'll stick at the end. It was just such a joy to sing along to the songs. You know, uh, Piggy in the Middle is one of my all time favorite tracks uh, and absolute stone cold classic Cheese and Onions. I mean, that was the highlight of the night for me. Uh, they didn't finish with it, but it was towards the end. 
and I was just in absolute heaven, singing along, singing my guts out <laughs> to Cheese and Onions. <laughs> and uh, although the Shangri-La was also really good, did a Goose Step Mama, they did them all. It was, I mean, you know, if you know the music, you know all the words to it, and you're there, and you're getting to see the actual guy who wrote it, singing and performing it, you know, 40 odd years later. It's just a dream come true. Uh, we sort of queued up. I, I kind of had an inkling that that, that might happen. Uh, so I took along a couple of records, uh, hoping to get a couple of signatures. And uh, we were queuing up and we didn't get any pictures, you know, we didn't get any sort of like, you know, pictures of us and them. There was a guy in front of us in the queue um, who was uh, bending Neil, Is Neil Innes's ear about something about five minutes and holding everyone up. So I didn't want to be like that guy. Uh, and there was a couple in front of us, you know, a nice couple, but they were kind of, let's get a picture with us with the let's get a picture together and like oh no you take one of me and it was like you know which is fair enough you know i don't have any kind of problem with people doing that it's their their chance to meet their heroes the same as ours uh but we me and ed just looked at each other and said we're not going to be doing any of that and ed was like no i just want to shake his hand and thank him <laughs> uh, ed had bought a t-shirt i think he had a question for neil I, I didn't quite catch what he was so i got some I have a little bit of footage of this part of the night, but I was a bit sort of tongue-tied, I didn't really know what to say, it was like, oh, I'm, I'm actually going to get to meet, because I just thought it would be a case of, well, will you sign this please, and yeah, thank you, um, but I was like, oh, no, what, should I ask him something, I don't know, and I was completely sort of like, you know, tongue-tied when it came to, to talking to them, and um, so I don't know, has that ever happened to you, has you ever met a, a musical hero and just not knowing what to say, or have you had met a musical hero and had a conversation with them, I mean, I've probably only met uh, I'm trying to think now of famous people who have actually met. Uh, I've seen quite a lot. I've seen a few famous people in the street and when I lived in London, uh, I used to see them all the time. Um, I saw the Queen and Tony Blair and Joan Armour trading, <laughs> walking out of Westminster Abbey. Uh, I've seen the Queen driving past in a car a few times. Uh, not her self-driving, obviously there was, you know, security and police and all that shit. Um, who else have I seen? Uh, oh, so um, Jerry Sadowitz, the comedian, and Mark Almond on the tube, uh, they went together. Um, uh, Robert Powell, the actor, who played Tommy's dad in the film, in the film Tommy, uh, <laughs> saw him at uh, Houston Station. And oh, there are dozens, you know, you just see them walking around the street. But you never actually... Uh, oh, um, uh, Zamo from Grange Hill as well. I saw him in the street. <laughs> but as far as like interacting with them, as far as having interacted with them, I met, I met Clint Boone. Um, it was, he was DJing Clint Boone from the Inspiral Carpets. He was DJing a, a, Christ, a New Year's Eve party at the Garage venue in North London, uh, which we were there, and we got there a bit early, and he was just at the bar having a drink. And so I borrowed a line from my friend Rick. Whenever he, makes, whenever he meets someone famous, he always says, Are you Clint Boone? And Clint Boone's like, Yeah. Uh, and I said, well, what's it like? And he was like, it's brilliant! And he gave me a big hug. <laughs> so I thought that was, that was fun. Um, <laughs> oh, and I did, uh, I did dance with Sue Pollard once <laughs> at a nightclub in Blackpool. <laughs> Apparently she was doing a summer season. Um, yeah, it was actually Sue Pollard. I had that confirmed by other people. It was like an indie night. She just turned up as, I think it was the charlatans I was, we were dancing to. <laughs> uh, but I've met Simon Pegg. Well, I've had a piss for Simon Pegg. <laughs> so uh, that's probably the, the you know my my one big <laughs> celebrity meet story. Uh, it was in 1999, I think. Um, it was during the England Greece World Cup qualifying match, the one where David Beckham scored a free kick, S scored from a free kick, um, <clears throat> and it was in the pub which in Highgate, which became the inspiration for the Winchester in the film Shaun of the Dead. And it was half time, and I went to the bathroom, went to the gents, and uh, there was a guy having a piss, and I stood next to him, and I was like, I can't remember what I said, it was something about, uh, something about the goalkeeping or something, and it was Simon Pegg, and we had a bit of an exchange about football. Now, I'm not a huge football fan, I mean, I don't really watch football anymore, um, so yeah. Um, but this was before kind of like the Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz. He was, he was in Spaced by then, so I knew who he was from Spaced and Big Train. So I kind of knew who he was. He was with Nick Frost as well, not in the toilet, but uh, in the pub. So yeah, I had a chat about Seaman in a public toilet with Simon Pegg. <laughs> That's Seaman, the, David Seaman, the English goalkeeper. No. <laughs> Um, I saw a thing about with Simon Pegg and uh, Nick Frost a couple of years ago, and they were talking about their favourite TV memories or something. And I think they put down watching England v Greece uh, as one of their favourite memories. And I was like, I was there when that happened. <laughs> they didn't mention anything about talking to me in the toilet though, so.
Anyway, so yeah, have you ever met a famous person? And did it go well, or were you just kind of like, bleh, bleh, did no one say, or did you say something you, you regret? I don't know. So I was talking to them, I got, I got Neil to sign my copy of Gorilla. Uh, you can see there, it says, to John, love, Neil Innes. You may not know this, uh, but John Halsey, aka Barry Wom, um, was actually the drummer on this album, Transformer. So I took my copy along and asked him politely if he'd sign it, and he said yes. And of course he signed it Barry, so... This may be the only copy of Transformer in the world signed by Barry Wom. <laughs> I might be wrong, but I don't... Uh, I'm, I'm happy to stay going with that claim. Um, and he said, I showed it him, and he was like, oh yeah, 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 Transformer, oh yeah. And he, he wasn't, didn't seem like uh, super happy. Um, he said he got paid 30... Well, I'll, I'll show you the clip. <laughs> Does he? Yeah. Would you he mind, really please? Just signing this fantastic record that you played on. And to me, is it a spot my name wrong on here? How many tracks did you play on? The lyrics. Um, the, the lyrics change. Two, yeah. the two biggest yeah. albums yeah. I ever made. Yeah. Still working on. That was <laughs> that one. They spot my name wrong. Yeah. And Jesus Christ, superstar, they left me off. Yeah. And the brakes. Never since. <laughs> I put Barry. Oh, no, of course not. But you won't remember who that is. I just thought it was incredibly... Uh, Thank you very much. It was so funny because it wasn't on the album. Okay. It was just hidden in the yeah. liner notes. Yeah. Yeah. 36 quid for making that. Absolutely extraordinary. Yeah. And it's got the name of the album. And it's got the name of millions. Oh, it was six quid. Yeah. Let's get on. Sure. Yeah, who's it to? Uh, John. John. Yeah. Can you be so kind of Of course. So he told me when I was speaking to him that he only got paid £36 to play on this, uh, which I worked out, it turns out it looks about 460 quid in today's money. Uh, it's like a one-off session. Now you think, you know, people play on like some of the all-time greatest albums. Set for life! <laughs> not, not, not when you're getting a session fee. Uh, <laughs> and he said they also spelled his name wrong. Uh, you probably won't be able to see it uh, on there, but they spelled it Halsey with a Z and not an S. All right, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I'll just put the, the rest of this footage I've got at the end now. Like I say, it's not a great deal. Uh, a lot of it was just uh, audio, really. Um, and so thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Hi, everyone. It's uh, Editing Johnny here. Uh, I just thought I'd, I'd drop this in. This is something that Ed sent me uh, after I'd filmed the video. Uh, and he said, what does this remind you of? <laughs> now, this is, the, uh, this is the cover to the single After Tea by The Rattles. Not the Ruttles, the Rattles. Uh, this is their cover version of a Dutch band called The After Tea. They did a song called After Tea. Uh, yeah, and he said, does this not remind you of something? And he was like, yes. I said, uh, it reminds me of um, the image from Sergeant Rutter, <laughs> uh, where they were, which was the album, which was obviously influenced by their taking of tea uh, after they met Bob Dylan, of course. <laughs> but yeah so the rattles image came out in uh, was from 1968 so uh quite a few years before the actual uh, rattles movie came out so uh don't know if it's an influence or not i mean think about the rattles i mean uh, i know the rattles from their 70s incarnation uh, when they had a female singer and they were doing a lot more sort of heavy rock uh, heavy psychedelic rock so uh if you like a bit of that kind of thing definitely check them out check out their album as uh, the witch that's a fantastic song and the track sunshine every day is is amazing so but the Rattles actually came from Hamburg and uh, they formed in the early 60s and they played in the Star Club and I guess who they did gigs with? Yes, the Beatles! <laughs> there we go, full circle. <laughs> uh, I just thought I'd uh, share this with you because I, I thought it was mildly interesting. Uh, okay, right, now on to some uh, shunkily shot footage of the gig.
<laughs> I fucking can't do this. I can't see a thing.